Welcome to episode 54 of Sequel Pitch, a podcast about friends arguing to see which one has the best idea for a sequel to a movie that doesn't have one already. Ooh. Unfortunately, Drew can't be here this episode, and all I have to tell you is the reason as why he's not here. It involves a drone, a window, some glass tubing, and many, many <laughs> knives. Yeah, that's why he's not here. Uh, so I am your host this week, and the pitcher as well, in this head-to-head, with a man that is racking up more wins than Michael is racking up bodies. <laughs> it is Andy Henry. Evil must die. Evil must die. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, that's not uh, even the right line, sorry. Hey, take two, take two. Evil dies tonight. Evil <laughs> dies. Yeah. I had, it, I had it in front of me and I still got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us for a second time, our guest judge, she is a freelance film writer and member of the Online Association of Female Film Critics. It's Kat Hughes. Yay. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me back. You're welcome. You're very, very welcome. What have you been up to, Kat, since we last saw you? Um, I have been, I'm just coming out of the other side of Fright Fest. So that was 71 films in 30 days. Wow. Um, wow. Watched and reviewed. So, yeah, I missed I missed three. It was three films at the festival that I missed and now they haunt me because it's just, just <laughs> it's like 71, just mystery. Yeah. That's just... Yeah. So, you can't focus yeah. on the 71 if you've got three yeah. missing. That's all you I don't feel focus, good about so. the 71 because I know that there's those three, but they're all getting <laughs> released soon. So I'm going to I'm gonna complete the set. Um, nice. So yeah, it's just, just recovering from that, really. Out of those 70, what were your best... What was your top five films that you saw? So one of them I caught a South by Southwest hypochondriac. That's like been my favourite since then. It's like a a queer Donnie Darko, but like really delving into the mental health side of it. Okay. Based uh, semi auto well, so you think it's based on the writer director's actual breakdown. He's ah. sort of he's he's made it and he's told his story with a bit of a a bit of a horror horror spin on it so that one was uh that one was good uh travis stevens a wounded fawn played really well um what else was there sissy that's coming to shudder really soon that's a really fun australian dark comedy about a girl who ends up on a hen do with her former bully nice. and <laughs> nice. it's kind of like cool. it's a little bit of it's a little bit american psycho but with an influencer in the uh in the main role okay so that's good uh the leech is a is a christmas a christmas set film about a priest that takes in this homeless couple and they are your sort of film poor white trash who just take over the place play their rock music really loud do their drugs like <laughs> snorts family members ashes and it's just very <laughs> very very uh very entertaining and set at christmas so you know you kind of kind of want that and then i guess sort of my fifth one would maybe be the living with chucky documentary it's directed by the daughter of the head puppeteer so the first okay. half of the film is this is how all the chucky films are made like your normal talking heads but then it spins around to look at her journey because she's only like 21. So she's grown up with her dad making Chucky. She's grown up with Chucky around the house. She sort of sees him as a brother in a weird way. Yeah. So it sort of delves really into those personal connections. So that one was another one that was, uh, was as somebody that likes the Child Play series, it was quite, quite informative. Do you know, I've never seen Child's Play. I should because I've heard very good things. It's a, it's a wild series because it started off with the first three where it was your very sort of like more horror and then Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky went all out comedy and then it sort of come back around to yeah. horror and now there's a TV series which is then leaning back into the humour again. So it's, yeah. There was a time when I was on the fence with Chucky but I think the more I sort of watch it and the, I sort of appreciate that at least it's it's still the same writer who's now moved into directing and they've just gone on such a wild journey with this with this doll it's it's quite interesting 
I guess it's yeah, kind of like re like reinventing the character a little bit, and you know, doing something different with like the whole comedy and stuff. That's mm-hmm. cool. Like we potentially may do in our sequels for uh, for Halloween. <laughs> But this is the uh, you, cat. You are the perfect person to judge these horror films uh, in our spooky Halloween season. Um, so, in case I, you, I just have on. to. I, I sorry, I have to. I still think about Cat's Top Gun pitch quite often. Yeah, like her, the scary, like haunted hat and stuff. It's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward. Looking forward to Cat uh, is going to give us. Uh, a sequel as well to see uh, if uh, I mean we probably would choose that to be fair out of uh, out of both of ours, but we've, you know we'll see we'll see at the end. We've also uh, said uh, Drew's not here, but we haven't cared about Matt. Oh Ooh. yeah, well oh, yeah yeah sorry, <laughs> Matt is also not. Matt's oh, like shit, listening at home anything. going look like I'm so stuck thirteen minutes in, not even my fucking <laughs> name yet. <laughs> Uh, he won't listen to this it's fine <laughs> he won't listen back um yeah unfortunately matt can't be with us because he finally caught the rona um mm. coronavirus struck him down um so like unfortunately... a bad halloween sequel it just came and <laughs> yeah him. yeah yeah michael myers just like coughed on him and then <laughs> then it was then it was dead he was dead then um yeah so yeah unfortunately matt can't be with us so Sorry about that. Yeah, seven minutes in. Shouldn't should have told you the entire cast. Um, now, in case you didn't realise, myself and Andy are going to go head to head, and we're going to be pitching sequels for the 2021 Halloween Kills. Now, we've already pitched our sequels to the one that came out in 2018. Uh, so, if you are a fan, why not go back and listen to if we got it right, if we got it wrong. Um, Whose sequels were better? I'm going to say mine because, yeah. Um, But today we are going to focus on our sequels to the latest movie ahead of the release of Halloween Ends. Um, So this is going to be coming out mm, around the same time, potentially. I don't know when, but yeah. Um, Now, I I haven't seen any of the trailers for Halloween Ends, so I can assure you that my sequel will not have anything in the trailer. So I can guarantee you of that. Yeah, I mean, I I will second that. I haven't seen the trailer. I also uh, uh, have not looked at anything towards this new film. So when I give my title, act surprised. Act like, <laughs> act like it's a genius idea and no one and no one's thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so for those of you that, Want a quick sum up of what happened in Halloween Kills? We do a 60 Synex 60. Oh my Synexis. god, Synexis <laughs> 60 60 Synexis. Uh, Gary's uh, um, we do a 60 second synopsis. So here we go. On October 31st, 1978, Deputy Frank Hawkins accidentally shoots his partner dead while trying to save him from Michael Myers. He also prevents Dr. Samuel Loomis from executing Michael. Forty years later, on October 31st, in 2018, Tommy Doyle celebrates the 40th anniversary by really bringing the mood down in a (laughs) stand-up thing of... Uh, Michael's imprisonment, along with fellow survivors Marion, Lindsay, and Cameron's father, Lonnie. Firefighters respond to Laurie uh, Laurie Strode's uh, burning house, and they end up getting killed. Laurie, her daughter, Karen, and her granddaughter, Alison, are taken to hospital, where Laurie undergoes emergency surgery as Michael murders Laurie's neighbours before uh, and uh, makes it... heads on the way back to Haddonfield. Vanessa uh, supposedly encounters Michael in her car, but then the driver crashes and escapes unnoticed. Tommy forms a mob of vengeful Haddonfield residents to hunt down and kill Michael. Alison reconciles with Cameron, her ex-boyfriend, and she joins Tommy's mob to avenge her own father's death. Laurie and Hawkins both end... uh, both awaken in the same room and reminisce about their former relationship 
While warning the Haddonfield community to stay inside their houses, Marianne, Vanessa, and her husband, Marcus, are all killed by Michael. Um, Lindsay escapes and is found alive by Tommy, Lonnie, Allison, and Cameron. They work out that he is heading for his... They work out that Michael is heading for his head... Uh, for his childhood home. Ooh. Um, Tommy takes Lindsay to hospital and informs Laurie about Michael's survival. Across town, Michael murders the current owners of his ha- of his home, uh, Big Dog, uh, Big Dave, <laughs> Big or Big John, Dog, and Little John, Big John and Little John. <laughs> uh, as Laurie, uh, and then uh, Laurie prepares to leave the hospital. And then a fugitive from the psychiatric hospital is mistaken for Michael and is pursued by the mob and he jumps out of a window and he ends up as Pate. Uh, Laurie urges Karen to work uh, with Tommy and Brackett to hunt Michael down. Elsewhere, Lonnie enters Michael's home alone and is killed and then Allison and Cameron rush inside to find his corpse and then Michael uh, kills Cameron in like a really weird way, like breaks his neck and back and stuff um as michael prepares to kill allison karen saves the day yay and and leads michael into the tommy's mob who swarm and attack him and seemingly and shoot him as well like four times and seemingly kill him when the mob disperses michael recovers and the massacres the entire mob there we go yeah yeah Uh, and then back at michael's home karen goes upstairs to investigate some for some reason she just goes upstairs because she sees the ghost i think of michael's daughter uh no sister sorry uh and then she gets stabbed by Michael at the end of the movie. So let's go with Kat because Kat, you're a, a horror aficionado. Aficionado? Aficionado? Yeah, that's a word. Um, what do we think of this movie? I mean, this is the 12th Halloween film. So I think sort of like by now, you'd kind of know what you're, you're in for really. Yeah. Um, I caught it at a press screening and I think with the right crowd, it plays really, like, really well. Um, there's lots of over the top deaths in this one. And that's kind of what you want from a slasher film. But it definitely feels like the middle bit in a trilogy. Yeah. Which the filler. Is, yeah. And it's a film that's marketed so heavily on Jamie Lee Curtis is back to spend a film sat in a hospital bed. <laughs> yeah. It just... yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was so odd. I was like, oh, she's, yeah, she, we're going to get some fucking bad out. Oh, oh nope, she, she's fallen over. She, uh, she's ripped her stitches. She's going back to bed. I was like, oh. How do you think that it, like, because the first one, like, well, the reboot of the first one, the 2018 one, was such, like, an homage to like the older ver- like the older versions of and the original original uh how do we think do you think this one was a, as better or like you said do you think it was like just middle of the road or do you think it was worse than the f- yeah i think and it was very very filler they did try to do some homages and it, in a weird way they they cancelled out the original halloween 2 in the halloween reboot by saying that michael's not his sister or anything and yet they do show some footage of Brackett finding his daughter's body, which doesn't happen until Halloween 2. Yeah. And they keep the, they keep the, the hospital name the same. So they're sort of acknowledging a film that doesn't exist in the canon as something that does exist. Um, there's, <laughs> there's, some, there's, some, there's some similar... The, like the mob aspect is sort of the similar in Halloween 4. And I mean, for me, the the nicest sort of nod is the three brats who have got the masks from Halloween three as their as their trick or treat masks. I nice, think that's sort nice. of like the, yeah. the 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 nicest touch for me. But otherwise, it was it was almost meaner than the Rob Zombie ones, which is it's kind of hard to make a Halloween film meaner <laughs> than the Rob Zombie ones because some of those some of the deaths in this are really really grim. Mm. Yeah, I was trying to think of the ones. So you've got the glass tube. Well, you've got the glass tubing in the throat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've Knife got... through the eye in the car. 
Yeah, you got knife through the eye. You got the guy, the da- the husband. I think gets stabbed. Well, he gets like smashed through the window and then sort of like cut up, and then he gets There's stabbed one... in the back about fifteen times with different knives. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah big John, little John. They um. Yeah, he gets his um, eyes. Yeah, that's it. Out. His eyes. There's one really stupid death, which I'm surprised they put it in. I don't know if they were trying to go for comedy or not. And it's when uh, um, someone tries to shoot Michael, who's in a car. Oh, and and Michael she kicks hit, the door, herself. hits the door, hits the gun, which then just turns around on herself, and she's like, just I guess mid shot Michael, and it happens in a split second, and she ends up like shooting herself. It's <laughs> made me laugh so hard, but yeah, I, don't, I was like, it was a pretty like scary scene at that point. There was no comedy mm. in it, if I remember, and then that happened, so I was a bit like. What a weird way to go as well. Just yeah. the force. He must have kicked that door. Because, <laughs> you know, she would have been scared. She would have been gripping that gun really tight. So, yeah. um... <laughs> um... Uh, I can't remember the, as if there's any others. There's obviously the guy who kind of, like, goes... Yeah, just gets his neck and back, like, Oh, well, Cameron as well. Yeah, Cameron's yeah. neck That's snap That's a pretty, pretty bad good. one. I was like, oh, yeah. Jesus. And he's just yeah. going, ooh... <laughs> That was good. Yeah, Tommy got um, stabbed. I think didn't he right at the, right at the end? I yeah, don't he had, I don't think he had a big death. He just had a uh, through the stomach yeah. and then fell. Uh, I loved what, it. I mean, he... it's, it's not it's, you know, it's not Michael's death, but the you know the uh, the psychiatric patient who oh my God. you know that you know like, yeah. like in the description you know he does become pate. You know it is <laughs> yeah you know, yeah it, that is quite it's... that that whole bit again. I don't know. So a big bit for me with horror, if you definitely want to scare me, because I think horror is the hardest thing to like for a film to uh, like emote to its audience is to get it scared because you're you know you're just aware you're in a cinema. Uh, and a lot of time in horror movies, they just don't you know do common sense or have logic and stuff like that. And they did it a couple of times in this film. Um, but um, oh, fuck. yeah, I think like there is there is times in this movie where you, yeah they 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 definitely don't use their. There's their a bit brains. where uh, Karen, I think, uh, right before she grabs her mask, and or or no, it's Allison where she's she's trying to run from like Michael when she's in a house and she literally runs past an open door to the outside and like, <laughs> runs yeah. in the living room and you're just like. No, that's not like honestly. Like, just do it. You can get normal scared and have them actually be like threatening as he slowly walks over to you. That's still I've... how he walks. That's how. Why don't people just like? Well, he is old now. Yeah, but yeah. why don't they just like yeah, go the opposite is. side of a car? And when he goes around the right, they just go around the left, and they like. <laughs> I'm sure this joke has been done, and it's yeah. the twelfth movie and stuff. But there's so many people that like run away, just like yeah, just run around a, a patch of like grass. And again, he doesn't run, so you could just like walk backwards and just be like. Oh, people I don't know, like, like minutes. Got to... about you guys, but like, I felt like, like Kat said, like, it does feel like filler in terms of mm. not really much happens and nothing happens. You, you've it... got like a couple, like, you've got a couple of like gruesome deaths. You obviously mm. want him to kill some people. I, I would like them to like do a little bit more on on him as a character, like on. Mm on michael myers so this like, is... you don't really get much like, yeah but this is this is funny because we evil. were we kind of brought this up in the predator review where we were like you know we could see what shane black was doing when he was trying to expand this universe and expand the character of the predator um and that's just not what they're doing in this franchise michael is still just this uh, this is he a man is he you know what is he and we, yeah, we know nothing about him. So there's nothing, there's like literally nothing in this movie. Like Laurie comes out of the hospital um, and then Michael comes and kills and then they have a fight and then she's back in hospital. Like, yeah, it's, it's a long, it's a long movie and they try, they try and fill it with like nostalgic characters and their kind of backstory or what they're doing. But I did yeah, like, like the scene between Laurie and, um, and Hawkins in the, in the hospital, oh, in the hospital. bed. They, they, yeah. that, I, I felt that was quite a nice. Why moment. didn't he shoot him again? Was it someone like wasn't? Oh, I think it was a Martha moment, wasn't it? Where someone was didn't someone say like he's got a mother and he no he, is that is it, that point or my thing? No, he else? just he goes outside and he's surrounded by the police, mm. and then they're I don't know why 
a public execution happens outside where they just like, yeah, we're going to shoot him in the head. Yeah. And then Hawkins comes down and goes, no. I don't know if he says he's got a mother or something, but he just like goes, no. Mm. Um, so and he, then, he, he literally, he ruined, he, he, he's responsible for all the deaths that, that follow. Yeah. How did you feel about that cat? Like in terms of like that little addition to a a flashback that... They could have shot him in the head, but they didn't. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're, they're trying to sort of explain, give it its own. Sort of, they're trying to give Hawking's like some sort of story. Yeah. I liked, I liked the flashback. I didn't necessarily the, the end. You know, maybe, maybe if he just disappeared and just walked off into the dark, and then Hawkins would have been like, I could have had him, but by the yeah. time everyone turned up. Mm. But I did, I did like the um, the sort of the throwback where you sort of, you see. Like Lonnie and stuff is because I mean a lot of people might not necessarily have seen the original, so it's nice to sort of like remind people of who yeah. some of these characters characters are. But for me, it's just having um, Jim Cummings uh, turn up to be yet another terrible deputy <laughs> sheriff and yeah. getting a, a really yeah. a really brutal death. I mean, I I actually interviewed him for his latest directorial film the next day after seeing it, and that was nice. <laughs> that was a strange experience because he had he hadn't seen the film himself yet, so he was like really nervous actor being like, "But was it good? Did I look what you know? Did I look mm. all right?" Oh, that's cool. And so he was kind of uh, like we went back. He was cut short, didn't he? Have a bigger part in in the the, the before Halloween. I swear, I swear he had like four lines in this, and the other one he was quite a big character. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I, I thought when he came on screen, I was a bit like, "Oh yeah, I remember him," and then he was gone. And I was like, "Oh okay." I was like, "Oh, I think yeah. I remembered him. I think it was fun." But what did you think, Andy? the movie oh it yeah yeah i mean a filler movie i guess is quite a, a good description but it's just not filled with anything it's very it just drags yeah it tries to fill the time with the characters of old and some of the new ones but you don't care about the new ones um i i did like the deaths the, yeah there were some good deaths and that definitely kept me interested for like you know a minute and then it was back to like, just michael walking and and people running away and then and, and that's it i liked i liked how the yeah they formed a mob mentality i thought that was quite realistic and kind of like a good thing to kind of draw to keep to, like to draw the crowd away and have it just like the the, the main people and uh and laurie uh, sorry and michael um but i think that would happen in real life as well like everyone would just get carried away i thought yeah. the, the fucking um um uh what's his what was his name the the psychiatric pa- patient them oh, mistaking the sh- yeah. uh, uh, them mistaking a short fat guy for yeah. tall muscular Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's and... fucking Michael Myers. Get him. Yeah, again, I don't, don't know. know if... We don't know what he looks like. Yeah, but you know how tall he is. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. literally like scrunched over, like rotting up the stairs, and you're just like, <laughs> that guy looks like a bowling ball. Come on, that's not that's not Michael. Again, you could be like, maybe it's uh, lost in translation for the amount of people that are in. But then, yeah, yeah even say like, stop. It's not him, and like everyone just goes. We're gonna not listen to like I don't know I don't yeah they say oh, we're gonna we're not gonna listen to Laurie but I don't know if they actually would or not um I don't know if they, they know how important she is to to all this so. I just feel like with this one like there a lot of stuff doesn't go anywhere mm. like I I was like oh yeah this is cool like the whole town is against Michael Myers when I saw the trailer I was like oh yeah cool the whole town is against Michael Myers nah. Nah, didn't didn't end up being like that, and and like I just remember, like when I went to see the first one, like as in the reboot first one, like um, all this. Uh, do you call it the second one? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The 2018 version. Um, I was like, wow, that was so cool. That was like the perfect, you know, nod to the originals. They had some really cool moments in it, like, you know, the tracking shot of him going into the houses and just uh, murdering mm. people, then coming out and stuff. Whereas this one, I just felt, I was like, yeah, it's not it's not a terrible movie. Like, I could probably watch it, but I think I think we're just waiting for the, like, the new one that's coming out. Yeah. Like, I, I just feel like we're just, it won't be remembered in, like, It'll be sort of, like Kat says, it'll be the filler one. So you watch the first one and you sort of go, eh, I don't really need to watch the second one. I'll just watch the third one like, and watch the finale of the series. Mm. I don't know. 
Uh, yeah. It's I interesting did... they brought all the nostalgic characters back in this one. If like the next one's going to be the end, even yeah. if they're going to kill him, you would have thought they would have had everyone back for the last one. What? And so had then... a, yeah, and all, all of them killed. Yeah, and all of them die or something. But they, so yeah, it's weird they brought them back in this one and just got rid of them. What is the next one going to be about? Literally, uh... apart from him just coming up and killing as he does, going away, come back, do his thing. <laughs> Well, the, no this is it. That's what that's what our job is is to uh, oh, basically to... my my pitch is him coming in, killing, <laughs> yeah. walking away. I killing. do. I know. I know. That's like the sign of slashers. Uh, you know, is you want to yeah. see some people die. You want to see some like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's like you know what we expect from slasher mm. movies in two thousand twenty. Well, Cat, what would you say a slasher movie is? Because with obviously horror, you need the tension to be, you know, the same level quite high the whole time. But is slasher, can you, you know, do you enjoy dips and, and, and peaks and stuff? Yeah, I think that's something that the, the, the slasher does. It's, mm. you you know, that you're going to get a load of people slaughtered. It's the build up to when are people going to start dying? Yeah. And I mean, for me, it's it's more like the stuff that I grew up on was like Scream and I know what you did last summer and that way you didn't necessarily know who the who the killer was obviously in halloween you know who the killer is you yeah. don't necessarily know why he's doing it but you know who he is so you are just sort of ready for a load of people to get dispatched and yeah. to wonder how they're going to not stop him this time because obviously we know he always comes back and as much as it the next one's called halloween ends is it though i mean how <laughs> yeah. many how many times have we had like the final chapter of a horror film and then you know five years later someone's wanted some more money and then back we are Oh, I'm going to call yeah. it now. At the end of the, la- the next movie, the title is going to be Halloween Ends, and then a question mark. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Ooh. I guess, yeah, it's one of those things where they just try and think up new ways to kill people. Yeah, I guess people. it's like the Saw movie, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all, literally all like franchise. the I, modern I guess, Saw, isn't it? Like, I guess I'm not too... Uh, like Because the deaths were quite good in this one, and I did enjoy them, but I guess I'm not a massive fan of slashes because, yeah, it's just like you get the nice deaths, and then you got like... 10 minutes maybe of just boring character stuff where you're just like they're gonna die so why why do i just kill him just have michael <laughs> yeah. at one like at one point uh and then just have him like in a long line of a mile people that he just kills for an hour and a half i'll be happy with that uh all right uh let's go around and do our final thoughts favorite bits worst bits and then your score out of five uh let's go with andy first um god good bits um the trick-or-treaters that little scam was quite funny um <laughs> i mean fair play kind of got me actually i was a bit like i was a bit like well obviously there's not and but like the the people given trick-or-treaters uh say there's can there's a razor blade in there someone's candy that they just gave out but then you would have thought like oh i know where i got the sweets from so there wouldn't have been <laughs> yeah. like uh but no, fair play. Also, he rushes also, out and tries what, to help. What was the point of that? Or the 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 premise of it was to, to get, get inside. It was their to house. get a bowl. So of all of them just... to go is, can you come over here, sir? Yeah, just yeah, come yeah. over here. But also, but it's like they need... they've got masks. They're all done for Halloween, and they go and just get a bowl of sweets, and they're like, "Yeah, we did it, we did it." And <laughs> yeah. I guess, but, but yeah, you could have done that if you just did Halloween. If you just yeah. went trick or treating, you would have got the same amount. Also, they're but... not really that far away from the owners of the house. They could have literally just gone over and be like, "What are you doing?" And then yeah. grabbed them. And Anyway, but yes, that was a funny moment. I um, yeah, you mentioned the drone earlier. That was funny. Just a woman randomly with a drone. I thought it was going to be a kid's <laughs> birthday present or something. Or it was going to be uh, suddenly it was Christmas, but she was just a drone, flew into a wall, nothing. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Um, but yeah, it was a bit boring for me. Nothing happened. I say the desk, the desk were good, but they're not for me. Not worth seeing it. Um, I'm going to give it. What did they give the? I gave the other one one, so I'm going to give this one one point two five interesting poses that Michael leaves the bodies in because he doesn't just kill him and leave them. He's just like let's do a bit of art. Let's put a watermelon <laughs> yeah. on this one's head. Yeah, make this I one mean... look like a teapot. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> mate, just do your shit and leave. Why? Like, also, you imagine if someone so walks into him halfway through and he's just like, oh, give me a minute. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Just um, I'm just doing something. Sorry, sorry. I thought I had more time. Uh, just imagine she looks. She looks like she's flying. Okay, I'll yeah. be back later. <laughs> nice. All right. So, uh, cool. Uh, Cat, what did you think? I mean, when I first when I first saw it, 
in the cinema, I enjoyed it more than I did on a rewatch. And I think part of that was the the audience were very sort of up for it. Whereas in my living room, I knew what was happening and yeah. it was a bit long and can we sort of, can we get to the end already? Um, I, I enjoyed the bit with the trick or treaters later on, whether on the park and Kyle Richard's character rocks up and is like, <laughs> yeah, what are yeah, you doing yeah. and they're like yeah there's this like weird pervert that like sort of <laughs> yeah, keeps just, coming up to us yeah, and yeah. walking off i mean i think those three kids are sort of like the mvps of this of this film um because good. because they are that's what kids are like these days you know they are little mm. shits that are, you know talk back to their elders and stuff and yeah i kind of appreciated that i appreciated the fact that as irritating as it was to have Laurie trapped in a hospital the whole film, that she didn't do the, you know, the action man cliche of like, yeah, I'm just going to have like massive surgery and then I'm going to be like walking in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I liked that they did sort of give her time to convalesce, but it also seemed like a wasted opportunity. A, you know, a great gig for Jamie Lee Curtis, just come and mm. sit in a bed for a couple of weeks, but disappointing for people that want to see this, this showdown. And... I just think they did Judy Greer a bit dirty. She didn't really get oh, to do yeah. to do much, and she and died at the end. So yeah, it's so I think that was probably sort of like my my negative part of it. It's like, well, you had this whole thing in the first film of them reconciling and her realizing it's almost a bit like John Connor and Sarah Connor in Terminator Two, where she comes to realize that her everything that her mum has trained her for is true, and that Michael is this real presence. And then no sooner are they reconciled, then she's just got rid of. And yeah. I just find that they're building Alison up, but she just seems to be a bit of a nothing character. So I would have rather yeah. Karen stayed. And what's more traumatic than watching your parent lose their child? Um, but I think, yeah, in terms of score, I'd probably go with a two. I think my initial thing when it was out was a three, but on a on a rewatch, it's sort of gone down a bit. So I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a two star. I love nice. the ideas of the kids bullying Michael, and that's why I was like, that when they were doing that, like, there's a man over there, he's popping in and out. I was like, why don't you just go over and kill him? But like, I love the idea of the kids <laughs> going like, oh, look at your mask, come on, where do you get that pound land? And he's like, oh, I'll stay here for a bit. <laughs> oh, oh, they seem mean. Ooh. He pops out again a bit uh, later when he's built up his confidence, and they're like, hey, there he is. <laughs> oh no, I feel bad again. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy, write these scores down, please. Can you do uh, that for me, my friend? Yes. Uh, while I give mine, so. Yours was what? 1.25. Okay. And uh, I think I am going to give it... Okay, let me explain why. Uh, so, favourite moments. I really liked some of the uh, stalkery aspects of the Michael Myers. Like, the bit when, after he kills all the people in the car... Then, then, then it's complete silence, and all you mm. can hear is his breathing, and there's no score uh, as she's running away, and then she hides behind like a, a tree or something, and then he goes out onto the sort of the pier bit. Um, but there's no score, there's no like real sound effects or anything. It's just his breathing and her like mm. petrified. I thought that was a really cool, tense moment, and something you don't really see when. You know, he's chasing someone. It's just complete silence. Um, yeah, yeah. I really like that. I, You did, Kat, remind me of the fact that why I didn't like it is the end. Is the ending is... I don't... Didn't like the ending. You're right. I thought killing off Karen was just a bit out of the blue and just a bit... Just didn't... I don't know why they're going to serve that because Laurie still it's gonna is going to open kill. on a funeral, I think. That's... Yeah, but that like has Laurie, to be it. like if you end someone on a, there's no, that's the thing. They end on, they end the movie with it, so there's no time to like take it in or anything. Or you know, you leave. I guess it's going like, <gasps> but so apparently yeah, they're so setting it. The 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 ends is four years later, um, which yeah. is a bit weird. So okay. I don't know where he's gonna <laughs> be for four years, waiting just in the bushes or something. I don't know. <laughs> Um, just playing with those kids to get that kids. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just I just thought the ending didn't serve it, and just was just an add-on bit of yeah. And I just was thinking, this isn't as good as the first. Aww. So I'm gonna give it <laughs> um two. 
two, uh, two fucking baseball bats called what are they called? What's his what's his baseball bat called? Oh, yeah. something. But also, what a pathetic weapon to have against Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah. Like literally, it's gonna break up once, and then you're fucked. Like, uh, let's go with two big John Little Johns with <laughs> big big knives and small knives out of five. Um, so that, what does that give us? Because the well, average for the other guys, is, yeah, is whatever this the is the average. The average from the three of us, I guess, out of five is one point three one. <laughs> um, so it it's not a high. Well, it's not a recommendation. It's quite it's quite low down. It's lower than Top Gun. Um, yeah. higher than Sweet Home. Um, Home Sweet Home Alone. Um, uh, yeah. just under Con Air. But okay. um, that might change with um Drew and Matt. Drews. So um, it's not yeah. a recommendation, but you know, go and see it anyway. Um, because then you'll know some information about the third one when it comes out. Although you could probably just Google, <laughs> Google what happens in it. Just listen to our just, just, just nothing to happens. Our just nothing happens. Synopsis. He kills some people, and that's it. It's not going to. You know, <laughs> what else? What else? Exactly. <laughs> so I think it's that time that we get <clears throat> our sequels pitched. So the rules are simple. We have a random amount of time to pitch our sequels to uh, Halloween Kills. Uh, and then at the end, Kat is going to give a, her sequel uh, to Halloween Kills. And then she is going to pick who is the winner in this head-to-head. There can be only one. Mm. Um, so, Kat, who would you like... If you have any questions as well, Kat, at the end of the pitches, feel free to ask them or we can just argue it out at the end. Uh, so who would you like to go first? And uh, Let's go with Andy. Andy. Alphabetical. Yes, your yes. pitch, pl- your okay. title and your like little synopsis. Okay, so my choices are Halloween again or Halloween still. Like, uh, uh, Halloween, <laughs> why are you still paying to watch these movies? Um, the next one I do need to explain is called Halloween, The Monster Who Molested Me. And what happens if we actually hired Jesus. the wrong Michael Myers? Uh, and he wanted to do a comedy horror to this, uh, to the spy who shagged me. So it didn't work out well. He, you know, <laughs> nice. Michael picked the title. He had too much creative control. But no, I'm going to, again, I'm going to go with, uh, or mine is Halloween Ends. And I genuinely didn't know that was the title of the, uh, the new one. Nice. So Halloween Ends. Uh, and my blurb, nice and easy. Michael Returns. Duh. Uh, but Laurie <laughs> finds a way to destroy the monster once and for all. All right, so we start in a nightmare with Laurie running away from Michael, but no matter where she runs, Michael blocks her path. He then kills her and throws her in a pit, and he starts like shoveling dirt on her. Uh, and as the dirt goes over her eyes, uh, she wakes up uh, and she sees Allison, and she uh, we still that she, uh, we see that she's still in hospital, uh, but she's getting out today. Yay! She puts on a black dress with Allison, and then they drive to the funeral of Cal- Karen. Oh no! Uh, as people around Laurie are crying, Laurie clenches her fist with rage. Uh, <laughs> Laurie and Allison nice. then go home, and along the way, we see the community is torn. There's different groups. Uh, with uh, different ways and theories about how to kill Michael. Crime and murder is up. Uh, the town is like hostile towards each other and the police. No one trusts each other. There's been sightings of Michael, but no actual clues that he's like behind any of the, the recent murders uh, or crimes. Maybe he did a bit of shoplifting. But, um, you know, everyone's <laughs> torn. There's little segregated groups. You know, it's bad times. Laurie and Allison talk about uh, how Michael just won't die, but Laurie says she's figured out a way. Uh, they need to kill him in his house, the house where it all started. Um, as the minute hand ticks onto midnight uh, of Halloween, or past midnight, uh, Michael appears and starts killing, as he does. He avoids the trap set by the town as they form the same mob mentality as the last film and try to find him. Laurie then finds Michael, uh, and he slowly, obviously, follows her into the house, and then she uses his knife to stab her in the heart. Uh, Michael falls to the floor and Laurie thinks he's dead. And we have that shot where he, she's looking over the body. Oh, is he dead? Or is he dead? And he grabs her throat and he chucks her out the window. Uh, the next day, she's getting patched up by Allison. And Laurie says she thinks she's injured Michael and the house um, is uh, has something to do with his power. So they, they have the right idea. They just need to think bigger. They gather the town and tell their plan is to blow up the house with Michael in it. Uh, big fucking explosion. Uh, 
Uh, but they need their help. They need the town's help. Half the town is with them, but uh, the other half only trust themselves to kill Michael. Uh, Michael returns on that night and starts killing everyone again. Uh, oh, that Michael. Uh, he finds Laurie and they fight in the house with Allison, who is exposed to gas pipe in the basement. They fight and Michael looks like he's going to kill Allison, but Laurie tackles him and they fall into the basement. The door locks and then Allison like, can't get it open. She starts panicking, going, oh no, you're trapped. Oh, this isn't the plan. But then Laurie looks her in the eyes and goes, no, Allison, this was the plan. And Allison's like, oh no, what's going on? Uh, and Laurie says that her plan was basically that she needs to die with Michael in the house to, in order to truly break the curse and destroy him for good. Uh, Alison tries to protest, but Laurie's like tells her to leave, uh, and then she fights Michael for a little bit of time so Alison can get to a safe distance. Laurie then uh, flicks a lighter, and the house explodes, leaving a big crater in the floor. Uh, when everyone looks uh, in the giant hole, they can't see Laurie, uh, but under all the rubble, they see Michael lying still. Alison then sees a house being built from across the road, which would have been established earlier in the film. That one of their neighbors is getting, you know, uh, like a, uh, a new house. Uh, so all the townsfolk come together and use the tools to bury Michael under his house and then kind of like they all jump on top of it, you know, flatten the ground. Um, when the hole is filled, people celebrate, but Alison cries, losing everything. And then the end scene is the town coming together and Alison trying to move on and over the top is a, a monologue uh, voiced by Laurie. So maybe if we do actually have a sequel somewhere along the line, this could tease maybe that she's still alive somehow, somehow. Uh, but her monologue is all about how, um, in order to truly defeat evil, we must come together. Uh, and then again, if we want to continue the franchise and have an after credit scene, um, we can have Michael's hand bursting out of the ground uh, with the lightning behind it in that classic Halloween shot. Michael's revenge. Halloween Michael's revenge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Kat, do you have any questions? So how much of this is actually set at Halloween? Because you've got Laurie coming out of the hospital. Mm. And then they do. So they, are they waiting a year? And then so, again, after failing, are they waiting another year? I can't. I I actually can't remember how where the other where the other film like left off. But she, there's probably a little bit of time, like a, a few months. Like I want her to stay in hospital basically for like say ten months. Um, yes. something wrong with her surgery or she had to, you know, get something. So when she comes out of hospital, when she's like, I've got a plan the first time around, maybe a month or so kind of trying to gather around. Also, she's, yeah, because she's going around in the community and stuff and finding everyone's, um, you know, off in their little groups. So um, uh, like the first uh, like, I don't know, half hour would be maybe like two to four weeks and then the rest of the hour will be like on Halloween. So they, when the minute ticks over, he basically pops out and starts killing. Um, and then he goes away the minute <laughs> it's uh, it's twelve oh one on the first <laughs> of November. I mean that is how he seems to how he seems to function, isn't it? So <laughs> yeah. I guess it sort of makes sense in a in a strange way. Nice. Any more questions for Andy? No, I mean I, I quite like the the sort of like Miles Dyson esque moment where uh Laurie's gonna, you know, light the lighter and, and explode the house. That feels like something that Do you have a good, end, a good end line of. as well, you know. I don't know where I don't know if she has a catchphrase in this one, but she'd be like, "Evil yeah, dice tonight." I'm Laurie. Motherfucker. <laughs> oh yeah, that might tonight. work. Yeah, there you evil dice tonight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah. Any more? Done. Any? Any? Done. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's down to the best one now. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so. Mine is called Michael versus Jason Halloween Ends. Yeah, oh, baby. Oh, okay. Here we go oh, now. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> After the death of Karen, uh, uh, Laurie needs to end this once and for all from an unlikely ally. We open the movie to a flashback of 1957. We see a sign that reads Camp Crystal Lake. We see a boy who is disfigured, being bullied by the kids. Uh, they're calling him Freak! Freak! Um, they end, he ends up being thrown into the lake. Um, and the kids leave him, struggling to swim. He ends up drowning. Oh, no. There is still this, the, there's still a shot of the camp. Then we get a time jump. And sort of, like, it will go through really fast. And you'll see, like, green grass will turn dead and things will start to erode and the camp will go into disarray um uh so after that 
we see a group of kids breaking into the ruins of the camp, doing, you know, normal kid things. Not the breaking in, but, like, they're, <laughs> they're going there. They're doing some, like, drugs or something. I don't know. Um, and what happens? Jason appears... Yeah, Jason Voorhees. I'm I'm crossing the streams. Here we go. Uh, he appears and then fucking murders these kids. Yes, Drew. Child murder is back. Here we go. Cut to the credits. Uh, so after the credits, we see Laurie. She's taking. Uh, she's talking to the police in an interview room, but the sound is all muffled, like she's in shock. She's just been told that her daughter is dead. Oh no. Anyway, she uh, is consoled. She's con- cons- cons- consoled. Fuck me. Can't speak today. Anyway, she's consoled by uh, Hawkins, and he vows to kill Michael once and for all for her. We then get a generic Myers uh, killing scene in which an, an old lady is watching a TV. Uh, she hears there's a noise upstairs. So she gets in her electric chair and heads up. Uh, anyway, Michael is there. She it startles her. She then gets on the chair to go back down, but it's slow. So he picks her up <laughs> and chucks her down the chair and chucks her down the stairs. She lands up against the wall and the track of the end of the track of the uh, <laughs> the sort of the um, bloody stair the stair lift. Yeah, uh, and then. Um, Michael kicks the chair, breaking it, and sends it hurtling down, down the floor. And then it squashes the woman up against the wall. Um, That's the first death. Um, He then looks at a TV news broadcast. He sees the guy with the cowboy hat, I can't remember his name, telling everyone that there is a full lockdown for people and that no one should come out of their houses. We then get a montage of townspeople all locking their doors, leaving everything outside and rushing in. Laurie, Allison and Hawkins head outside. They answer a police call uh, that they get about the old lady. They rush there. The next victim is um, Michael's... uh, The next victim of Michael is the neighbour of the old lady. He's the one that called the police. He's outside mowing his lawn for some reason. Um, Anyway, Michael stabs him in the leg and uh, he's like crawling away. And then Michael gets on uh, and then on the like sort of drivable mower and then mows over him like and there's like blood and stuff and guts. Uh, And then he heads into the house to kill the rest of them. Laurie and the gang turn up. They have a fight with Michael. He manages to escape. Uh, the guys are dumbfounded. Then they are trying to figure out how to kill him. And then maybe some weirdo, for some reason, tells them about a freak that lives in, in the woods by the camp, uh, which can either be moved, because I kind of want to reinvent it. It's not. It's a reboot. So they can, it can either be moved to where they are, or it can be where the first one's set. One of them set in... Uh, New Jersey, and one of them set in Illinois. So, either the either or. I'm I'm happy to go with whatever cat the director <laughs> wants to go with. Uh, and um, and and the, this weirdo says, "Oh, there's loads of kids that have gone missing there." They head to the camp uh, where there's apparently people gone missing, and they find Jason there. They have a fight with him. Maybe a generic cop then dies. Um, but they know that he's powerful. Oh, yeah. So they have to lure Michael to the camp. So the next few scenes are interlaced with uh, Michael killing people. So some of the ideas are piranhas. Um, he kills people <laughs> with a piranha tank, potentially. Pool cues, shoving a pool cue down someone's throat. Like when they're in the bar and he's like, what are you dressed as? And he just shoves the pool cue down. Oh, throat. I thought you meant like after he lost the game. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, and then another cool one would be Mentos and Coke. Um, so, like, maybe he shoves Mentos down someone's throat and then pours Coke and then he just goes, Whoa! and then stabs it. Um, either one. Uh, anyway, Laurie manages to lure Michael to the camp and then we see a showdown. Michael and Jason have an epic fight insert 20 minute fight scene in which the general public are getting killed Laurie and the gang are trying to help anyway they end up 
at a meat packing plant for some reason, and they have a big giant grinder thing. Uh, not the app for uh, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> for men. Um, <laughs> the they have yeah, and then so basically, it's looking like he's going to push Michael in the grinder but then he knocks jason away not into the grinder though and then like jason falls off and then yeah we don't see him and then laurie while he's being like my michael's like dealing with uh seeing like if jason is still there laurie comes up to him and says halloween ends now or halloween ends bitch and then kicks Michael into the grinder. Then we see Michael's body get turned into mincemeat. <laughs> they all look relieved, but uh, they try and find Jason's body, but it's gone. They all live happily ever after. post credit scene of Jason still alive, looking <laughs> over the city lights. We start a new franchise, baby. Here we go. Just looking over the city. <laughs> yeah. Or... What could be going through his head? <laughs> He's just like... Look at these lights. Oh, this city, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. wouldn't be the in so that wouldn't be like that wouldn't be the actual standalone one. You could still do his, you know, his origin story. I just think that that'd be a good thing to tease to start <laughs> up a new franchise. Anyway, and we haven't seen it before. We've seen Freddy versus Jason. We haven't seen Michael versus Jason. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I guess we I guess we are in some ways do a new Friday the thirteenth film. It's the one that's sort of been left on the shelf for, for a little longer than its than its cousins. Mm-hmm. Um I mean how <laughs> again, I it's, it's it feels very much like a it already feels like a Jason film rather than a than a than a Halloween film. So, you know, is Michael gonna be a, a key part of this? Yeah, he's still gonna be like I still obviously like obviously I couldn't go into more detail, but like I still want to have the whole Laurie trying to figure out who this guy is, and maybe um, then we actually maybe right at the end we actually see his face and stuff, and um, he is still going to be like killing people, and they're still trying to work out why he's killing people and that he's pure evil. Maybe they can even do like a backstory. But I did have a flashback of of Michael as well as a kid. So potentially that could be something that you could put in as well. Um, like of him being like bullied as a kid could, but I don't really, I haven't seen the first one. I know that they've got a, a bit of him killing his sister, but yeah, I don't. Yeah. So I would still have him in there. I think like Jason would only be in it for a bit. Yeah. So is it going to be a case of like apex predators recognizing that in each other, and that's why they they start fighting each other? Because obviously, like in Freddy versus Jason, it was like Freddy taunting Jason and calling him like a mama's boy and stuff, which yeah. sort of uh, started the fight. I think so. I think um, I think it, yeah, it would be an apex predator sort of who's the better, who's the better, yeah, who's the who's stronger basically. But who's um, going to catch? Who's going to be able to catch the other one though? Because they both have that slow walking thing. I know. Oh shit! They're both going to be slow walking at each other. They're just going to be the same distance uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions you would like to ask me? No, I don't think so. Good. Then it's I my favorite so time. Many. It's my favorite time is where we are going to argue to win you over, Kat. Uh, Actually, let's go with your pitch, actually, first. Let's do your pitch before we go into the arguments. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So mine involved, like, notice boards and pins and stuff. So it's... um... I'm going to do an introduction, a basic plot, and then just go through some some character arcs. So nice. it's not a linear thing, but it all makes sense. So if there's one thing that the last 12 months have taught us in cinema, it's that people love a multiverse film. You know, you've got mm. Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange, everything, everywhere, all at once. People like a multiverse, and what better franchise than one that has rebooted its timeline five, six times? <laughs> Nice. So okay. this is uh, Halloween, yeah, Halloween multiverse of evil. So <laughs> the uh, the basic 
plot is uh, at the end of Halloween Kills, it was alluded that, you know, maybe Michael's this supernatural being that feeds on fear and whatnot. So Hawkins, Mm -hmm. desperate to redeem himself, starts looking into various books and the occult. He stumbles across something from uh, the Court of Thorn, which Halloween fans will know links into, into other films. And he thinks he's found a way to make Michael mortal. So he gets to go to the Myers house and perform this ritual, but something something goes wrong and anybody with a blood link to Haddonfield appears. So we have uh, characters from what I'm calling the original timeline. So that's Halloween 2, 4, 5 and 6. So you've got Jamie, Jamie Lloyd, daughter of original daughter of Laurie and Tommy Doyle, so Danielle Harris and Paul Rudd. Nice. Then wow. you've got the uh, <laughs> twenty the twentieth anniversary timeline. So you've got Josh Hartnett coming back as as, as John. Wow. Then um, nobody from Resurrection makes it because nobody from Resurrection has a blood tie. And you've got uh, the Rob Zombie Laurie Strode turning up, and uh, they're all interacting with the fortieth anniversary Laurie and Allison and Hawkins. So they all sort of team together and you know work out a way to kill michael which is is again linked to the myers house and is basically a culmination of every way that they've all tried to kill him done all at once sort of so it's like one on top of the other on top of the other so he's like his head taken off he's getting shot Mm -hmm. he's getting stabbed he's getting injected with things electrocuted and then eventually the house gets set on fire and he he burns to death um but whilst all that's happening we've got some some character work so you've got laurie 40th anniversary laurie who is grieving the loss of karen she's suddenly confronted with her daughter from a another timeline and she sort of struggles and a son from another timeline so she's sort of struggling to to <laughs> rectify her grief with these with the other, other children nice. and they they have like some heart to hearts and then laurie dies saving uh, Jamie from Michael in a, again in a, in a retribution sort of thing for not being able to save Karen she then saves her, another daughter from yeah, from him sure. yeah. um, before dying Alison uh, is also struggling with grief she again connects with, with Jamie and John because they both lost a mother and she doesn't necessarily do much she has a nice scene with, with John because she sees that he has got past his mother's death and she is one of the people that makes it makes it out of the film. Um, mm. But she she's kind of the cheerleader of we've got to kill Michael because yeah. she is so yeah. so raw still from mother dying. Uh, Hawkins takes a back seat to the madness. Um, when the madness begins, he's just sort of like, oh god, what have I done? And then he offers himself as bait for the finale, the the, the big finale, mm. and. He basically has to go and stand in the window and he has he gets killed in the same way as his former partner did all those years ago when when he accidentally nice. shot him. And so there's a lot of things kind of coming full circle. Um 20th anniversary John, he he has moved on, he's been fine. But then he's suddenly confronted with it's his mum's face. Like he he grew up with her and like there she is, like twenty years, twenty years older. So yeah. he sort of struggles and goes into goes into warrior mode, and he has a he has a nice hero moment with with Jamie, where they basically both uh, start kicking the shit out of their uncle. And there's maybe some sort of like cheesy throwaway line about you know mother sends a regard or something. I don't know. Um, nice. Dan Chalice, who people will know as being from Halloween Three. He makes an appearance on the television in the background. They're all sort of like working out their plan and the camera sort of pans either from or to a talk show where Dan is trying to get the message out that Silver Shamrock are not to be trusted, thus implying that maybe, whilst he doesn't have any blood link to Haddonfield, that maybe Halloween 3 is the same universe as Halloween 40th anniversary and that he's just spent like the last... 40 years trying to get people to believe that this toy company are wow. the root of all evil. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. And then <laughs> Jamie and Tommy are sort of interlinked. So in Halloween 6, Jamie dies or 
a version of Jamie dies. It's not played by it's not Daniel Harris that plays the character. It's somebody else. So they both arrive, and Tommy's immediately suspicious because, as far as he knows, she's dead. So he tries to turn everybody against her, but then she she reveals that as a child she managed to escape the cult and she was missing from them for a couple of months while they were searching for her and she managed to find another child who sort of looked a bit like her that she swapped clothes with and the cult captured this other girl instead. And with her uncle not being able to speak, he could never be like, guys, that's not my niece. So <laughs> uh, that's that's why, as far as Tommy thinks, she died the that story helps her and Laurie connect because they've both been in hiding for most of their life from yeah. this and that man that's terrorized them so there's some nice heart to heart scenes there and then Tommy is revealed to be a bit of a turncoat I mean he's if you've seen the Halloween 6 with Paul Rudd he's pretty he's pretty creepy and you kind of think that maybe he is in on the call and in in the Halloween Multiverse of Evil he is revealed to be in on the cult um, after the end of six he was just so broken that he saw solace in the only other people that understood anything to do with Michael Myers which was the cult to the point of he helped them complete their ritual which was to kill baby Stephen who was Jamie's son but yeah. the ritual didn't have the result that they wanted because obviously it wasn't original Jamie so when presented with the original Jamie, he then sets out to to murder her and he 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 almost does it, but then Michael sort of swoops in at the end and kills him before he can he can get to Jamie because, you know, if anyone's gonna kill her, it's gonna be it's gonna be him. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, our final our final character on the roster is the Rob Zombie, uh, Laurie Strode. Mm. At the end of Halloween two, she has just she's had a complete mental breakdown. She is now fully believing herself to be Angel Myers. And so she's she's comatose for for much of the film. She's only bought out of it when she sees Jamie, played by Daniel Harris, who also played her best friend Annie in the Rob Zombie film. So she's like, oh my God, Annie's back from the... Because she's already seen like visions of the mother that she never knew. And then suddenly she's presented with her best friend who she last saw busted yeah. on a bathroom floor so she has a complete psychotic break and knowing that in her universe michael is her brother and loves her she seeks him out to to be with her brother but obviously in the 40th anniversary timeline they're not related so michael doesn't know who she is and just butchers her and it's quite a like a heartbreaking scene because she just wants she just wants to be safe and she thought that he was going to provide that safety and there's maybe an element of throwing back to the judith death where she's maybe sat at a dressing table like sort of waiting for him and then he comes in and then he sort of murders her in the same way as, nice. as judith and yeah while all these story arcs are going on michael's just you know walking around slowly murdering anybody that comes into into his path until he he gets that siren call to go home, and then it all goes <laughs> terribly, terribly wrong. Yeah, that, I like there's some good mm. like things in there. I really like the idea that, um, yeah, that he would kill, kill the other Laurie, thinking that she was his brother. And I like, um, yeah, I think that would be a really cool scene. I think that would be like, like really cinematic. I like when everyone comes out of the portals and then Josh Hartnett picks up the hammer and says, Halloweeners, assemble. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you know, the multiverses work and, you know, yeah, it just seems true. like as it was, as it was sort of looking, looking through all the films, it's like, well, this is the, this is the franchise that it makes. I mean, Jason and stuff just goes so mm. weird. I mean, at one point. A, a, space Jason, isn't it? it, it space, the space Jason. Jason yeah. But there's, there's also um, Stephen Williams, who was, um, who was uh, Mr. X in the X-Files. He's a coroner and obviously is a, is a black man. And then he eats Michael's heart and Jason's heart and then becomes Jason. That's like one of the Jeez. Jason films. So <laughs> it's, the timelines on that just would, uh, yeah, that wouldn't work. But I feel that, that the Halloween franchise sort of lends itself to that. And then <laughs> I just, if anything, nothing else, it's just as for, for Daniel Harris, because 
she should have she should have been brought back for this this final trilogy and she wasn't so in in this version it's uh, Jamie and Alison that sort of survive as this new mother daughter alt world dynamic yeah it's nice i mean i would definitely pick yours if i if i <laughs> could choose uh but uh i think it's time for me and andy to argue uh so to help you pick who's the winner mm-hmm. then we will fight uh so yeah let's go <laughs> let's do it um i can i bring something different to the franchise i'm bringing jason in who's a very famous uh serial killer we haven't seen them fight on screen before we've seen freddy versus jason but I, I like this to be a prequel like a preview of what's to come in the new franchise out ending halloween and then starting jason and you know you've got some stuff in there some emotional stuff with uh laurie losing her daughter uh and yeah i you know andy's just building a house at the end of it and they're just holding down uh they're just holding down uh, jace uh they're holding down michael mars while whilst flattening the the earth with yeah their you know feet. when you jump up and down and like <laughs> on earth to flatten it that's what they and do. then they just build a tesco's on top of him uh <laughs> Um, you should pick mine. That's why. No. So, uh, well done. And I've well got done. cool deaths as well. So. Yeah, well done. I, I, I will say well done to your deaths. Your, uh, your, your uh, chairlift got me rolling <laughs> definitely. And I was expecting Michael to like sit on it, go down, and somehow like run her over, <laughs> which he fell at the end of the track. So I was just like, oh, if he somehow runs her over, but then the lawnmower did it instead. So well done. <laughs> um, yeah, you bring back Jason, but come on, n- there's no reason. It's not his film. It's Laurie, and Laurie does nothing in the film. Talk yeah, she about does. No, she t- kicks him into the grinder, and and and. But what else? Mince- she, she she spends Act Two basically with a treat, like <laughs> like lowering him, luring him, just going like, "Come on, come on," <laughs> and he's just like no, bending down. She's smart. He's got yard. some. She has some emotional scenes. I just didn't put them in with um with. You just Hawkins. didn't put in your pitch. Not important. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah fine. Just, she has some good moments with Hawkins, mm. like uh, about you know obviously her daughter dying. Hey, yours is just, yours is just, <laughs> yeah, more of the same. Yeah, more of the same. At least that's I what we like. That's different. what we like in this franchise. We like a big, <laughs> we like more of the same, and then a big explosion at the end. And yeah, yeah I mean, yours, big, yours, big yours is, exactly, exactly. End on, on end on a big high. Um, I would say Ross's <laughs> isn't a Halloween sequel. It's a if it's a new series of anything. It's a Michael versus Jason. It's it's he didn't follow the rules. He should have a point knocked off for that anyway. Um, <laughs> it is but... a sequel. It's a sequel. They're they're still dealing with the effects that happened of my my see my stuff. Like you know yeah. the you and then Jason just walks off in the end. Yeah, like, no, he disappears. Take, 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 oh, disappears. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he and doesn't walk. Just, I mean, and he then does after credit scene, you don't just, see it. He's just above on a. He's just looking out into the town and starts like singing Frank Sinatra or something. Yeah, mm. No, he's gonna see. He's gonna be like, ah, I'm gonna fucking kill some motherfuckers now. <laughs> Next time, I will kill yeah. some motherfuckers. I yeah, don't. I don't buy their motivation. Movie. I don't buy the motivation why they would fight. If anything, they would join up and take on everyone else. Like, just because they're apex predators, that that doesn't do it for me. <laughs> that don't do it. No, yeah. no. The, you can explain that in the in the dialogue. Yeah. How are well, they, they gonna explain it? it? They don't talk. Neither of them yeah, talk. Yeah, so they can just look each other and what? Just start stabbing each other. <laughs> no, but they're... Laurie's they like, it's a, working. And they're just like, <laughs> one after another. They have a stare-off. They have a stare-off. So they and change masks. Gonna, yeah, and, like, and then he's going to like punch him and then Jason's going to punch him back. And then, yeah, mm. then it's going to... It's just, yeah, don't worry about the details, yeah? They'll find a way to fight each other. And, yeah. then, and then Laurie can go... Let them fight. Let uh, them fight. And then... <laughs> um... No, so Ross is not focusing on the important characters. I've got the important characters. Has the emotional stakes of, of Karen's death. And then Laurie going, ah, oh, you know, this is this is it once and for all. I don't introduce any new characters. I focus on the people we have. And I give you a, an actual Halloween end. Yeah, boring end. Oh, no one wants to see a boring boring you end got a big explosion to... at the end and people stamping up and down the grass and a giant <laughs> tesco appears <laughs> also 
So the body is. So where is Laurie in yours? So like I would, as I, if I'm writing it because it's the end of the trilogy, she blew up. But okay. if if we want another sequel or something else, like she's she so she could have somehow yeah gone in like a lead filled you know cupboard or fridge or something, and then she's like there, <laughs> and then she got blown to safety, and she appears like two months later. But in my yeah. actual like script, she would have died. That's the whole point. She needs to die with Michael. And then Michael's dead at the end, but just to make sure they bury him, you know, even may- maybe nice, like, even sweetly, they're like actually burying him. They're putting him to rest. Why would they put him sweetly to rest? He's murdered like yeah, seventy no, no, it's, people, it's, including kids. It's not kids. done sweetly. It's just like afterwards, you could be like, <laughs> oh, okay. If anything, it's just they've literally put him to rest now. He's put buried. Him in a little plaque. Done. Be like, you know, he a little, lies yeah. Here. Well, that, obviously, his hand. If he comes out at the end, at the end, it has to have like here lies evil or something. <laughs> evil dies tonight, and then <laughs> hand um, comes up. Yeah, I mean, I just think that. I just think that yours is yeah, you know, meh, yeah. meh. Yeah. I yeah, just like, yeah, like yeah. like your act two. Just meh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Laurie, hey, Laurie, going, come on, come on. Great. Just my luring Michael. How is she going to lure Michael? Oh, uh, no. No, sorry, it wasn't no Jason. Treats. Sorry, treats. Treat. Like, yeah, see, I'm literally Meat? thinking like smarties. He just picks them up. All yeah. these kids he can murder. He's a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stab. Ten minutes <laughs> yeah. later. He's another kid. Stab. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just killing kids. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, yes, I think you should pick mine. That's why. Uh, Andy, give your one little line. As mine to why you follows pick. the events of the last film. It takes the characters seriously. It gives them a good ending. It gives the story a good ending. And it doesn't bring in an completely unnecessary character. Okay, Kat. You're, the choice is yours. Who do you think should win this uh, episode of Sequel Pitch? See, I like I like elements of, of both. I do like how, in terms of the trilogy, Andy's is the one that sort of like makes sense because it does round off the, mm-hmm. the, the story mm-hmm. and stuff. But I'm a sucker for a versus film, so... Mm-hmm. And I, it's been a while since I've seen Jason, and I kind of, you know, I like the idea of yeah, Michael is is over... But don't worry, there's this guy that can look after us now. So I, I think I think it's gonna just for the, the the fun factor of that. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go with uh, with with Michael and Jason. Cause yeah, I want to have a good time in the cinema. I don't want to have to sit through. I mean, I mean, yeah. your, your titles were literally like Halloween still. Halloween again. And it's just it's so. basically the same thing, but it's us ending the actual yeah. franchise. And to be fair, actually, Halloween could just be like the umbrella title and you could just have different monsters underneath, couldn't you? That's quite yeah, not a yeah. bad idea. And then, but, and um, then still, and still then the wrong you... choice. <laughs> Piranhas, pool cues, <laughs> Mentos and Coke. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean a... it's 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 what it, it's it's obviously like Piranha 3D is being homaged but, and yeah, yeah. uh you have Urban to think... Legend, there's something in there with Mentos and Coke, the stairs, Where... you've got gremlins, it's there you go. Where is he that there are piranhas? Where is he well, then that there's pool cues? Can... And then where is he there's Mentos and Coke? Well, I love people, it. He's just by a swamp. Pets, you yeah. Know, yeah. People... <laughs> The yeah, true, I guess you know, exactly I don't pets. quite know why he's. I don't quite know why he's. You know why he ends up in a bar, but mm. you know unless he's going to do I that Halloween the karaoke that they have. But... <laughs> yeah, it'd be a terminator. Yeah, like, I... like give me your clothes. <laughs> yeah, I see him, oh, speaks, him going speak. breaking into a house and there's like a tank filled with piranhas <laughs> and then she's like. <laughs> Or yeah, or somebody's like feeding them, or yeah. and then she slips, and then he puts her head in, and then they eat her face, oh, and then follows. she's like, ah! Mentos and Coke. The I like, I, I, I like. There's so many ways that you could do that as well. Like, I, like him just stuffing someone's throat with like Mentos, and then turning yeah. the Coke, and then running away, <laughs> <laughs> and then they just blow up. <laughs> so, thank you, cat. For picking mine, um, next episode, we are going to be pitching sequels to Dog Soldiers. Ooh. Oh. Dog Soldiers. Dog soldiers of Dog. Cow- I'm so glad that I don't have to pitch sequels to this. <laughs> um, there we go. So get your sequels uh, ready for Dog Soldiers. Um, and as ever... Thank you for listening. If you think I should have won, then please feel free to tell us. If you think Andy should have won, then feel free to tell I us. I should if you have think won. Cat should have won. Uh, feel free to yeah, tell Kat us. Yeah, Cat should have won. To be fair, yeah. yeah. Um, 
You can uh, find us on our socials as ever. Uh, Sequel Pitch on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, let us know what you thought of the episode. And you can now join our Patreon. You can become a Pitch Pal. And our Pitch Pals so far are M from Verbal Diorama, Jack Chambers Ward. Jack Chambers Ward. Sounds like an action hero. And uh, Sag- Sagood... Goodson, Sagudson, Sagudson. He's a Sagud son. So thank you for being a pitch pal. We would like many more of you to become pitch pal. So please head on down to our Patreon. Thank you very much. Uh, and Kat, where can people find you if they would like to find you on socials? So I'm on Letterboxd and Twitter at Gizmo Shikari. And there's a link tree on there where you can find all of my uh, various uh, writings and things. Nice, nice. Okay. And I'm sure Kat will be back very soon to pitch another movie. Uh, maybe another Halloween scary movie, maybe. Hey, but elf, elf. You could yeah, probably do some elf. good horror with Elf. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a reboot of Elf in horror. Okay. Well, it's goodbye from Andy. Goodbye. Goodbye from Kat. Bye. And it's goodbye from the best winner in the world, me. Thank you very much. Bye. Mentos and Coke. You're going to get appetizing for that. You're going to get Coke to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, and Mentos. Yeah. Send us free Mentos. <laughs>